What's up everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about the future of WordPress and how creating content on your website is going to undergo a dramatic shift. Now we know WordPress is the most popular content management system. If we go over here to w3text.com, we can see that WordPress powers 28.4% of all websites and from the content management system space the market share is 59.2 percent so wordpress is the dominant leader in terms of creating websites online now the closest competitors are joomla and drupal and those are great cms's as well but as you start going down the list you can see that the other solutions are often less than one percent market share all right i like to say that that's because wordpress has been around for a long time it's a mature system and one of the pros about it is that you get to own your website and your content and your platform now that's something that's important to me with some of the other solutions you don't always own your entire website all right so i'm going to go over here and i'm going to show you how creating content on your website is going to change and I'm going to do this on my local web server. And the reason for that is because this is beta software we're going to be working with. It's not ready for production websites. So it's safer and better to test it out locally on your computer. You can get a local web server like MAMP, RAMP, or ZAMP. Download a fresh copy of WordPress and test it out in a safe environment. All right, so we'll go to our dashboard. We're going to go to plugins over here. We're going to click on add new. We're going to go over here to search plugins and type out Gutenberg. And this is the plugin we're going to be working with. Now they're rolling this out as a plugin first before they add it to the WordPress core. The reason for that is because it's going to be a transition. They want to get as much feedback as possible. They want to iron out as many of the issues and bugs that they can and try to get as many people to play around with it as possible. All right, so we'll look at the more details. And pretty much what this is going to do is give us an ability to create our posts and pages using content blocks versus the tiny MCE editor that we're already familiar with. All right, it's not very well reviewed, but you got to remember this is beta software. So any issues that exist now will be ironed out by the time it's officially released for production websites. So we'll install now. We'll activate it. And then once you activate it, you're going to get this link in the admin sidebar. And you can look at a demo or you could create a new post. First, let's look at the demo. And these are the content blocks. This is the visual editor. As you can see, this section over here is for the title. This is our cover image section. This is where we're going to be adding our individual content blocks for our paragraphs and things of that nature. And this might look familiar if you're coming from another type of service because other platforms have already started using content blocks within their services. And this is just an easier way or the goal is to make it an easier way to add content on your website. All right, so this is talking about some of the features that they're looking to integrate into WordPress. And now let's take a look at creating a new post. So we have the add title, we have the write your story, we have the plus icon over here where we can add our content blocks. We can choose which content block we want to add. We also have the icon over here as well. The recent options, all of our blocks over here and the various embed options that we have. And then we have the sidebar over here with our category and tags. Featured image, excerpt, discussion, and the table of contents. If you want to look at the text version versus the visual editor, you will click over here. But what I'm going to do now is do a side-by-side -side comparison of the current tiny MCE being used by WordPress and this new way that's going to be the future of creating content and adding content to your website. So what I'll do is I'll just put this on the left-hand side of my window and I'll bring up the other local website that I have and I'll have it on the right hand side. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'll go over here, I'll add a new post, I'll collapse these sidebars over here just to give us more space. Now I'm just gonna add a title here and I'll do the same thing over here. All right, pretty basic, right? All right, so what I wanna do now is I'm gonna put in some media first and then I'll put in some content and then I'll add a YouTube video as well. So I'll go over here, click on image, insert from media library, I'm going to choose this one right here. This image is um, from the video I created on how to make a WordPress website. You can add your caption over here. You can look at the settings for it. You can trash it if you want. Then I can go over here, down here, and put in some text. I'll just grab some lorem ipsum and paste it there. I'll do the same thing over here. Add media. Put that there. And lorem ipsum. All right, so now we can see that 
doesn't seem that much different, right? I mean, it does look a little bit different. We're working with content blocks versus the tiny MCE. So you do see the toolbar is missing over here. And what happens is when you click in an area, you get the toolbar over here. And as you can see, if you click on an image, it tells you what you can do with that particular image. You can link out somewhere. You can edit it over here. You can choose the alignments. But if you go to a content block with text, then you can see that you have your left center to right alignment, your bold and italicized, and your link options here. Then you have some of these options as well. Now, one thing with the Gutenberg plugin as of yet, they don't have support for the meta boxes. But again, by the time this is ready for inclusion in the WordPress core, they'll have that all figured out. WordPress developers that work with plugins and themes like myself, we're going to be identifying how we can implement some of the new changes within our themes and our plugins and our code to try to keep everything compatible and working smoothly. All right, so one thing I did notice is that if you look over here, the preview icon is grayed out until you save it. And then you can preview in a new browser window. Over here with the tiny MCE, you could just preview out. Now, obviously the formatting is gonna be different because this is using the 2017 theme on this side. And on the right hand side, I'm using my custom theme called Evo Pro. But in terms of the functionality, it's pretty similar. We'll X out of this one, X out of this one. Now let's embed a YouTube video. So what I'll do is on this side, I'll go over here to the insert button, go to embeds. So I'll go get a YouTube URL. I'll just paste it right there, embed it, and we're good to go. I'll do the same thing over here, paste it, and now that's good to go. Let me preview that. Over here we have to save, and then preview. All right, so that's going to be something that needs to be ironed out, right? Because it seems like it takes a couple of more steps to get things done with the content blocks versus over here. Maybe it's just the fact that I've been using WordPress for years and this is just something that I'm very familiar with. But over here, this is gonna take a little bit of getting used to. But again, if you've seen other solutions, other services, they're using the content block solution. All right, so now let me see if I just add something here. Again, gotta go to the embeds. Put another video, paste that there and embed. On this side, I'll just paste that there, preview, save, and then preview. And now you can see we have that there. All right, so just a couple of extra steps, but it's a pretty clean way to do things. If we expand this now, let's make this a full window. And you can see this looks a lot cleaner than using the, um, the old tiny MCE editor. It seems you have a lot more screen real estate on this side than you do over here. All right, again, if you want to look at the code or if you want to look at the text without looking at the visual editor, you can check that out over here. And you can see the markup that's used versus over here, we see how that's worked out. All right, so that's pretty much Gutenberg in a nutshell. If we publish this, view post, that's how it looks. Over here, publish, view post, and that's how that one looks. Pretty similar, aside from the fact that they're using different themes, the process seems to be you know, pretty easy. It doesn't seem that it's going to be that dramatic of a shift, but it is going to be a change of how you create blog posts. If you go over here to your current post that you have, you can see that you can also view in the standard tiny MCE format, or you can view in the Gutenberg format. So we'll go back over here, click on Gutenberg, and now you see that format here. One good thing that I like about the content blocks is that you can change things around in terms of their location. So if you're working on your content for your article and let's say you want to shift up a paragraph or if you have the video here and you want to put it somewhere else, you can do that very easily. You can just click on the icons there and it pushes it up. Now that's a little bit different in terms of the tiny MCE. So if we go to edit post, you would actually have to highlight the whole entire section, cut it, and then paste it wherever you want. So that will be a couple of extra steps, which is not as user-friendly as the new way going forward whenever they release this into the core of WordPress, how you could just choose the location with these, um, these options here. All right, so what do you think? This is Gutenberg. This is the future of creating content on WordPress. It's going to change your workflow, but it's something that is meant to improve the user experience and make it easier for people to create content on their website. Again, WordPress is a constantly evolving platform. There's a lot of talented developers working on it. And the goal is to make it easy for people to create a website. All right, so leave your comments down below in terms of what you think 
about the future of WordPress and creating content on your website. Do you like it? Do you not like it? What would you change? What would you keep? What would you get rid of? What are your thoughts? What are your recommendations? Play around with it, download a local web server, get a fresh installation of WordPress, and install the Gutenberg plugin. All right, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Take care.